Welcome back to Unreal Tips and Tricks. This is part two of a two-part demonstration of the Variant Manager. Make sure you check out part one, where we learn the basics of setting up the Variant Manager. In part two, we're gonna build a car configurer that allows us to turn on and off variants in our runtime experience with the help of blueprint functions provided by the level variant set actor class. As you can see, we have several variants in our level that we can use to generate a car configurer. The first thing that we need to do to create the car configurer is generate the user interface. And this is done with a widget blueprint. To create the widget blueprint, go to the content browser and click on the add new button in the left-hand corner. Go to the user interface folder and select the widget blueprint. Let's go ahead and give this widget blueprint a name and then double click on it to bring up the widget blueprint designer. So in this designer, we have a variety of options that we can access from the palette to start generating user interface elements. What I wanna do is just create some simple buttons for variant silver and variant blue, as well as some text to call out the variant set. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just go to the palette and drag our text block out and drop it kind of toward the bottom of our UI. So with that text block selected, in the details section, you can see there's a variety of attributes that we can modify and change. The one that's most important is content. We wanna change that text to say body. So now we've created our first UI label. The next thing that we wanna do is create a button. So we're gonna go back to the palette and we're gonna drag a button out. And you'll notice that the button's kind of boring looking. It's just this simple rectangular shape. What I want to do is have that button be based off of an image. And if you look in the appearance section, we have the ability to do that. So I've already got some images in my content browser in my textures folder. We're going to take this texture map that represents the blue variant, and we're going to map it into our button for the normal state. So to do that, all you have to do is highlight it in your content browser and click the arrow to assign it to that image. Now you'll notice that the aspect ratio for this is assuming the shape of that original rectangle. And that's not really what we want to do. We want to have it be the actual shape of the content that it's generated from. So all we have to do is click on the size to content option up here. And now the button's exactly the same as the texture map that it's generated from. Pretty straightforward. So you'll also notice that in the appearance section, we have other options for the hover state, as well as the pressed state. We wanna use that same texture map for the hovered state and the pressed state. So we're just gonna click the arrow next to each one of those images to map that texture map into those spots. One thing that we may wanna do is make that hovered state be slightly different than the pressed state and the default image state so that when my cursor rolls over it, there's a bit of interaction with the user interface elements. It's really simple to do just by toggling on the inherent tent attribute. So now when we float over that, it's gonna change color slightly and really make it feel dynamic in the experience, which is super, super cool. So the final thing that we wanna do is just give this button a name that's a bit more meaningful than button four, seven, eight. We're gonna call this button blue. And we wanna do the exact same thing for the silver variant. So I'm gonna drag another button out and I'm just gonna kinda of go through this a bit quicker. So we'll just kinda of map these guys really quick. Again, we'll turn the inherent tent on and of course we wanna make sure that aspect ratio is set to the content. And we wanna give this a name that again, kind of matches with what we're doing, which is button silver. Cool, so now we've got our buttons added into our user interface designer. I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to kind of nudge these guys up a little bit and sort of align them ever so slightly so they look a little bit better. So now that we've created our UI elements, we have two things that we need to accomplish with Blueprint. First, we wanna get our UI elements driving our level variant sets. And second, we need to get this UI into our scene in our experience. So let's jump over to the graph and I'll walk you through the process of getting the UI elements communicating with the level variant set. So for Blueprint to interact with the variants, we need to create an object reference of the level variants sets. And this is easily done with the get all actors of class. And you can get to that by simply dragging out off the event construct and searching for get all actors of class. So we'll just grab that guy. So the class of actor that we want to get obviously is going to be the level variant set. So again, we'll just start searching and we'll start typing level and you can see we now have the level variant set actor. So this level variant set actor is an array. We're going to get a copy of that array by dragging out off the out actor and just searching for get a copy. So the copy of the array that we've gotten is at the first index. 
Now it's worth mentioning that the get all actors of class can be a bit costly. So it's a good idea to take this array of information and promote that to a variable. So if we just drag out off of that and say promote to variable, you can see that it's given us a new variable that it made automatically for us. And notice the variable type is set to level variant sets actor. It's exactly the same thing as the class that we use. So that makes perfect sense. So all we have to do is connect these guys together and give this new variable a name that's a little bit more specific. So we'll call it level variant set. So now we have our reference with the level variant set and we can use blueprint to interact with our variants, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to have these variants switch on and off based on the mouse click events of our blue button and our silver button. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the variable we just made and search for the switch node. And what we want to do is we want to switch the variant by name when we click the trigger button or when we click the blue button or the silver button. So this switch variant by name is a really great node when working with the variant sets. It allows you to specify any of these variant sets. So we're just going to call um, the variant set that we want to work with uh, car body. And the variant name that we want to have turned on is going to be the variant silver. And what's going to trigger this is going to be the blue button or the silver button. So we're going to highlight the silver button variable. We're going to come down to the events and we're going to tell it to create a new on click event. So we're just going to click on the plus sign next to the on click event. So as soon as we do this, we have this new on click event that we're going to use to trigger so we can get rid of this guy. We don't want that to be the actual trigger of the switch. We're going to use this to actually go through and have it fire off and trigger the switching on of the silver variant. Very straightforward. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing for the blue button. So we're going to say on the blue button, we want to have an on click event. So we're just going to click on the plus sign next to the on click event, pull that up. We're going to take this guy and we'll just control W it to copy it. And obviously we need to attach that to the target and we're going to have this become the, the execution of that. And obviously we want to change the name to blue. So we are done with this bit of code and it's really straightforward. So we're getting our reference of our level variant set so that we can begin working with our blueprint nodes like these trigger buttons. And we're basically having, when we click the button, just turn on and off these two variants. Very, very straightforward. So we can go ahead and hit the compile button on that and save it off. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we want to do is create a new blueprint that's going to add to our level the user interface widget that we already made. So how do you do that? Really straightforward. If we just right mouse click inside of the content browser, we're going to create a new blueprint class that's just a simple actor blueprint. And we're going to give this a name called um, BP underscore, um, I don't know, we'll call it UI Builder. So now that we've got the blueprint UI Builder, let's go ahead and double click on it to jump into the graph. And on the event begin, we want to create a widget. And the widget that we want to create is actually that widget blueprint that we made for the car configurer. So pretty straightforward there. And we just need to add this to the viewport. So I just did a search for add. So let's connect these together and compile it and close it down. So now what we have is a blueprint that we can add to any level in our project by simply dragging it in. And it's going to automatically add in that widget blueprint with all the code that we built inside of that widget blueprint. So really pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how our experience works. All right, so we have our UI loaded up and you'll notice as I mouse over top of it, they change color because of that inherent value that was set on the hover icon. And if I click on the silver ball, it goes ahead and changes to that variant silver. And then obviously if we click back on the blue ball, it changes over to the variant blue. So everything is working exactly as we would expect with our car configurer. So that's just a quick example of how we can use the variant manager with the help of some UI and some blueprint code to build a simple car configurer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Cheers, everybody. Mm -hmm.